It's raining in Southern California today, so it's going to be kind of difficult to get out and do a video because obviously cameras get wet and I don't really want to risk it. I, I already did a rainy video in New York. So, but what I wanted to do is the first thing that I'm going to do here is I'm going to dart this Dimorphodon. I did end up getting my unique up to level 15 last night. Really wasn't that difficult between two Pandactylus spawning so much more last week and then Dimorphodon spawning so much right now. It uh, Everybody should be able to unlock this dinosaur at least, maybe even put a couple of levels on it. After the two week period here, I believe both the flyers are gonna go back to dawn and dusk spawns. I can't remember if they're night spawns. I think two Pandactylus is a night spawn. But today the rare dinosaurs take over the special event supply drops. And it really just kind of depends on where you are in the game as for which dinosaur you should go after. So Edmontosaurus doesn't really have a use currently no matter what level you're at, but I hesitate to say don't dart any because Tenontosaurus had no use in this game for the longest time and all of a sudden now it's one of the most coveted rare dinosaurs in the game. It might be worth your time and your effort to go out and dart a few of those so that you're not chasing DNA once a hybrid comes out. If you are newer to the game, Eniosaurus is an, a, an exceptional dinosaur that will really help you in battle arenas. It's got a couple of really nice moves and I know that I used it for the longest time as I was making my way up the battle arenas. Rebecca on MetaHub loves the dinosaur. I think hers is like level 29 or something. Um, not saying you should really go to that extreme, but if you're looking for a dinosaur to make an immediate impact on your team and you are newer to the game, Eniosaurus is a great, great option. If you're a little bit past the beginner stages and a little more in the intermediate, Triceratops is going to be a great option. Triceratops makes Stegoceratops, which even today at the higher levels, if it's leveled high enough, is a really good dinosaur. It lost the ability to do three stuns in one like battle, but 275% stuns is a great constellation prize. There's no shame in going after Triceratops if you're in that, that middle range, a little bit past the beginner, but not quite to the end game arenas. Uh, Stegoceratops is, is, I mean, Triceratops is gonna be great for getting you towards Stegoceratops. And then if you're kind of where I am in the higher levels, you have all those dinosaurs, you are competing, you know, in, in the top two battle arenas, you maybe want to go after Tenontosaurus because it does make an exceptional unique hybrid. Now, the reason why I would say if you're in the lower levels, don't go for Tenontosaurus. Getting to level 20 is no joke. And then the amount of DNA that you need on top of that in order to unlock the unique dinosaur. If you're at the lower levels, and as you see, I'm at level 19. If you're, if you're not able to get 250 DNA per darting session, I almost feel like it's worth, it's a waste of your time to go after Tenontosaurus because in 24 attempts you're not you're still not going to be able to come anywhere near level 20 if you're not already there nor are you going to be able to get to a point where you can start making any real progress towards the Tenontorex and so to me it feels like that's just kind of a waste of the DNA whereas at lower levels you can get the Eniosuchus and that will help you immediately to progressing in battle arena. So that's kind of the theory behind why I say, depending on what level you are in the game or where you are in the game, that should dictate which DNA you go for. Again, a Montosaurus has no use in the game right now. 1.6, I could totally change and it could be one of the most coveted. So I hate to say pass up on any of it, but maybe pass up on it. Then again, you do only have 24 attempts over two days. That's 12 per day. And the special event supply drops are, are spaced out a lot more now. As you see on my screen, there are only two anywhere in sight. So if you're not going to get to 24, it's better to get to 24 and get DNA that you maybe can't use immediately than to waste any of those attempts. 
So what I want to do today before I jump into this Power Players Strike Tower, because there is Dilophosaur Gen 2 DNA on the incubator, only 348 total incubator uh, DNA available with 31 of it being guaranteed rare. I honestly would love to have 317 DNA of Dilophosaurus Gen 2. But what I want to do first, before I jump into this, is I just recently created my Thor. Yesterday, I created a new dinosaur, and I, and I was able to get that up to level 15. It is right here. The Dimodactylus, I could level it up to 16, maybe. Get close. Nah, probably not even. But I'm going to stop at 15. It could get a legendary hybrid. If it does in the future, you probably, most likely, are only going to need this to be level 15 in order to do that. So I'm going to save the additional DNA from that. But it is time to create another new dinosaur. A lot of you probably already have this one. I haven't had the Alanqua DNA in any kind of numbers ever. So now that I finally have it at level 15, I actually have some decent DNA. Now I'm really struggling with I'm really struggling with the Ankylosaurus Gen 2 DNA because I put it all on my Ankylo codon for sure. Like I only really should need three fuses for this. If I go 20 at a time, there's my first 20. And even if I go 10, 10, I've still got enough DNA to unlock. Where if I go 50? Perfect. Another new legendary hybrid. It's pretty exciting. It, it, this dinosaur is lost a little bit, I think, with 1.5 because it has the swap in. I'm gonna continue here. Because it has a swap in invincibility. The problem is there's a lot of armor shatterers in the game right now. So maybe lost just a smidge of versatility. But superiority strike, again, I don't necessarily... It, it got a nerf, but I think it is what it was supposed to be originally. It's got rampage for two times damage, short defense, and then long invincibility, which you become invincible for two turns with a cooldown of four. A uh, pretty decent little dinosaur right there flying reptile also i'm going to try to make this a two for one video i'm going to try to unlock the very last of the legendary dinosaurs that i don't have yesterday i unlocked the last unique that i have available and going 10 at a time this might prove to be a little painful this is not starting off great i need 10 fuses i've done two and i still need nine fuses so This could be a failed bit. I'm gonna need that 50. Okay, so the 40. So I'm back on track, maybe. I'm, I'm still a little bit off track, I think. Maybe just a little bit. This should be my fifth fusion, and I'm at 80, and I should be at 100. Let me do a quick check of my DNA. Um, I hope that I'm able to make some more Notopatosaurus, because I'm probably gonna need it. Although three fuses to get 80, I probably have some 10s coming up. Now I have two fuses and I need 50. So a 20 and a 30, a 40 and a 10, 20 and 20 is not going to do it. Hopefully I have enough for one Notopatosaurus or I get no 30. So I'm going to head over to my Notopatosaurus. Oh yeah, I need 50. This should be pretty easy to do. Two fuses is for sure gonna get me up to the 50 needed. And this is how you start leveling up right here, is when you start working on these hybrids of hybrids, super hybrids, then you start really like doubling up on your leveling up. So, and then just barely the 10. So now the last, of the legendary dinosaurs that are currently available, Gigaspikosaur. It's going to have 200 and not 200, 2,855 health, 553 damage, a speed of 109, armor of 40%, pinning strike. So if you're looking for something, if you're running into Draco Rex Gen 2, having this dinosaur on your team could be good because. It does have the pinning strike, which is going to prevent Draco Rex 2 from swapping out. Decelerating impact is going to do one and a half times damage, 
Rampage, two times damage, short defense, and then the counter attack, which is gonna do 50% of your total damage of 553, so roughly 230-ish. Everything else is a unique dinosaur. And then the, the gray card, I don't know what that is. I believe that's the dinosaur that I will get DNA for probably on Friday for a season three tournament. And I, I think it's epic. Don't quote me on that though, but I, I believe it is epic DNA at that. So now what I want to do is I've got some new dinosaurs. So I'm gonna modify my team and, and Ludia. Like if we're watching, well, we're gonna put in Giga Spikasaur. If you're watching, can, can we please have the option to set up multiple strike teams? I um, After yesterday's video, I went into battle with my normal, with my strike team that I used in the video. And actually, oddly enough, the, um, the dime, the dime, uh, what is this? I, I can't remember what this is. I don't know why. The Dimodactylus actually did really well. It was kind of funny. And then I got Thor. So those are the four new dinosaurs that I have created most recently. So I'm gonna go into battle. Again, this is like this should be no contest, but I want to try out my new dinosaurs, the level three. I mean, I don't even know. Maybe maybe we'll go Giga Spikasaur. It's a pretty tanky beast. But Rampage should should do oh. Rampage may not even get it done. Even with the counter attack. <laughs> I should have, that would have been very easy to overcome if I would have just done, um, I don't have superiority strike. That is pinning impact. Still really wasn't ever gonna be an issue there. Incubator, after the next victory, I'm gonna do the same thing that I just did. I'm, I'm hanging out over here by a park in the hopes that Dilophosaurus Gen 2 spawns. Uh, we're gonna start off, I don't wanna use my Allen Kylosaurus. I think there's already an Allen Kylosaurus. Alanqua, Glo, but I, I don't want to use it because of the swap in. So what I think I'm going to do. Alan Kalosaurus. Yeah, so I had that right. Aeneasaurus. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to swap out <laughs> and throw a little bleed on the buddy. That's going to do, I believe it was the 25% damage. And then what I want to do is I'm stuck here for two turns. <laughs> so they swapped out. Swap in distraction. Okay. There's a lot of swap moves going on here. So the damage over time. And then I'm going to impact and run into my Thor. No, I guess my my lockdown wasn't expired yet. Which is fine. I will just jump over into my Alan, Alan Kylosaurus. I don't know why I thought a different dinosaur was Alan Kylosaurus. The strike's gonna do no damage. I'm faster than my opponent. I have a rampage, if I remember correctly, for two times the damage. Not quite a knockout. I got pretty lucky there that I didn't get stunned. I'm not gonna lie. <clears throat> and there you go. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Let's see what I get out of this incubator. Dilophosaurus Chin 2 is what I'm looking for. No matter what amount. No. 
I'm going to be very sad if um, going to be very very sad if I don't get any Dilophosaurus Gen 2. I appreciate everybody's comments on about the parks. It seems like this is people have noticed and this is kind of a a big deal. So hopefully something good comes out of my video. Iguanodon swapped in. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Swap in stun. And I got lucky again that I didn't get stunned there. You definitely, for sure, can make a lot easier work of this strike tower than what I'm doing. I'm I'm simply playing with new dinosaurs that obviously I've never used before, except for Thor, but I'm not really even using Thor. Because there's no challenge in that. There's no effort. This Dimodactylus could be good in future strike towers. Simply because of the swap in bleed and then the bleed move right after that. It's going to end up taking a lot of health off of opponents. Uh, the health on it is not great. But um, it kind of has it kind of does really well at the job that it does which is to force your opponent to swap out of the dinosaur that they have and into something else or trade out a one for one. I'm gonna get stunned here. Unfortunately I'm I'm on lockdown so I can't even swap out of the stun and that's the that's the tricky thing about the swapping in is when you're stunned and you're locked in, you can't really do just a whole heck of a lot about it. So this is going to be a swap in distraction. I did superiority strike that time, so I'm going to cleanse that distraction. Get the second knockout. Like really, any kind of team, you you should be you should be okay. These uh, these dinosaurs present a little bit of problems simply because of the swap ins. They're they're actually really nice swap ins. The distraction, the stun at higher levels, like later in the week when these towers become more difficult, I could see a team similar to this being pretty formidable. And you actually have to actually try and think about it. Dilophosaurus Gen 2, please. That makes me very sad. That makes me very, very, very sad. Well, I've got one fuse here. Man. I would have liked to have gotten at least a 20 on that. All right, so the grind begins. I need uh, thousands of Dilophosaurus Gen 2, but takeaway from the video is everything that's left here is a unique. Let me just double check this. Or look at all. I know that this is a unique. Tenontorex. Trico. Teoraja. Toromoloch. And Utarinix. All uniques. All the epics are unlocked now. All of the legendaries are unlocked now. And um, all that is left is uniques that's all i've got for today let me know what you think of these new dinosaurs are are you using them and if so what is your team build also let me know what dinosaur are you going for from the special events poly drops that's what i want to know that's all i've got for today so until next time